Here is a video of my 1972 Mercury Capri and my collection of one owner vehicles. I just so happen to have three one owner cars in my possession right now. I was at an estate sale with my wife and I found this Capri there, dusty, forlorn, and I had to take it home to add to my collection. This was the first one owner car I bought. My wife remembers this, uh, the person driving it in high school, a friend of hers. And we managed to buy it off her after she pretty much stopped driving it for the last few years. And this is a one owner 1972 Mercury Cougar XR7. Totally original except one repaint back in the 90s. It's got a 351 Cleveland and it's just a really nice cruiser. This is my business right here, Royal Coach Limousine. Those are my cars I use for weddings. And then here is the other one owner car. This is a 1970 Ford Country Squire with a 390. We bought this off the original owner who was a costume designer in Hollywood. And the last movie he did before he retired was Spaceballs. And this vehicle was what he used to carry all his costumes around in. We've had this one about two years now. We've had the Cougar, oof, probably six or seven years now. And then of course, this is what I'm doing the video, the Capri. This gentleman bought it in San Bruno, brand new from San Carlos, Lincoln Mercury, Village Mercury. This car's completely original, apart from obviously wear items, things like tires, and one repaint in the original color. But they only repainted the outside, and it was repainted in the 80s, but here's the original paint on the door jams. That's all original paint. Original interior, even the carpet's original. Obviously the floor mats aren't, but the car carpet is. Original upholstery. Look at that. Headliners, just beautiful condition. <clears throat> Doors shut perfectly. Road style wheels and this is the V6 car. 2.6 liter V6 and this is the Cologne engine. Now the difference between the European ones and the American market ones, instead of saying Ford here, it said Capri, which is really cool. This is the original license plate. It's a low number blue license plate, low digit blue license plate. Let's fire this gal up. Okay. The key. There she goes. Thousand. Real good oil pressure. <clears throat> Pop the hood. And there's 2.6 V6. Now the gentleman that owned it was a aircraft mechanic, the United Airlines in San Francisco Airport. So he kept really good care of it. He did install electronic ignition and a few other things just to make it more reliable. But this is all the original paint under here. There's the VIN plate right there. The VIN number, sorry, stamped in. Goes. Oh, the sun's coming out. Beautiful. Let's see it shine.
what's great is the gentleman that owned it kept a logbook from new. Let's walk away from it. Here's his United Airlines. Let me show you what came with it. He ordered a book from Detroit, Michigan. That was his shop manual, official Ford one. This is a warranty card. There's Village Lincoln Mercury. And of course the license plate surround shows that. Here's the pink slip. And there we go, 1972. There's his uh, uh, warranty card. Protecto plate, I believe it's called. And this is something I had no idea they had. This is a build sheet. So this car, this is the original build sheet for the car. And then here is his, his log of every time he changed the oil. 1,200 miles. Look, every 2,500 miles he changed the oil. It just keeps going. Every time he worked, like, lubed lock cylinders. And he dates it. Charcoal canister. Who replaced this charcoal canister? So he replaced it at least three times here. Clean plugs, change plugs. It shows he did a valve job about 7,000 miles ago on it. So it's probably why it sounds so good and it doesn't smoke or anything. We go, it's still running. Let's kick that throttle down because that was the. There we go. This car's got an automatic transmission. It was originally a four-speed car, manual transmission, but about seven years ago, he couldn't use the clutch anymore, so he spent $4,000 and had a shop put a overdrive automatic transmission. So it's one, two, three, an overdrive. Works really good, but it originally was a four-speed manual transmission car. It wouldn't be too hard to convert back, because all they did was put the pedals together. So this piece could be taken off, and um, everything's there, the mechanism's still there to swap it back. But I quite like it as an automatic. Oh, and even the clock works. There's the clock. Okay, now we'll take it for a drive. nice and warmed up still got good oil pressure we're still at 40 psi at 1000 rpm with temperatures coming up let's go for a drive if you're used to driving uh, a modern car, she might not be that quiet. This 
brakes up front, she's slowing down nicely. Turn signal is working, see the little flashing away. Doesn't make the noise, but. <laughs> Radio works too. I don't think it's the original radio, it's aftermarket, but it is a cassette, so it's period correct. Let's just do a little acceleration here. Nice and quiet road. Before we run out of video space of the 1972 Ford Capri. Okay, and now we're going to have a look at the underside of this one owner 1972 Capri. But first of all, let's have a look in the trunk or the boot. This is all original. As you can see, there's really zero rust on it. This is the original padding, I guess, sound insulation. There's a gas tank. It's a little, little scratched from use because this actually wasn't covered from the factory. Just this floor area was covered. Spare tire well. Original paint, excellent condition. That's not rust, that's just dirt. Should have cleaned it better, I guess. Okay, let's go underneath it now. Original bumpers. These are the original fog lights, reversing lights, sorry. White pack. The exhaust has been replaced <clears throat> by the original owner. This is blue here, and I thought initially this should be black, just visually. But if you look, you can see it's all original paint here. So obviously from a factory, this was just blue. There's the exhaust system, dual exhausts. It's interesting how they looped it over, came around. I'm sure that's just a copy of the factory. There's a decal on the rear end still. I should have cleaned that up, see what that says. There's a little moisture right here. But apart from that, it's very clean. I haven't detailed this, this is just how she came. Now we can see the blue paint all the way up along here. So they did a pretty good job from a factory. I'm sure that's a factory paint mark. It's a little bit of a little bit of surface rust right there where my finger is. But nothing serious. I think a quick detail wouldn't take care of. We're running along the left hand rocker. Just under seal, a little bit of under seal right here. This little outrigger looks like he hit something at one point right here. Not bad though. And then we come back and be here again. Just see how clean it is underneath. And I have not detailed underneath at all. This is how the car came. Okay. We come along this side now. 
And again, just wonder if it's from jacking, you know, when they put them under the, the lifts, like they grab them, because it's the same spot both sides. <clears throat> I mean, it's just a little, just a little dirty here and there, but that's about it. Oh, I should probably show this. This isn't stock. This is an aftermarket electric fuel pump. The mechanical fuel pump was removed and he put an electric fuel pump in its place, which is probably actually better. And we're gonna roll back down along here. This is the drive shaft that's it's custom made for the uh, base or truck equipment make did the drive shaft because this now has an overdrive automatic transmission in it so it's a four-speed automatic Ford for overdrive mm. Mm. I'm come to the engine now because information on it. Oops. Yeah, it's too dark. Look at the suspension again. Again, I see these little yellow marks. I don't know if they're factory or not. They seem to be. Not detailed underneath the engines. A little damp. No drips though. Just a little damp. But I mean, look inside these chassis. These well, the unit body. Look how pretty that still is. Mm. Here we come back down. Okay, and that concludes the underbody of the 72 Capri. Okay, and now we're going to have a look at the engine compartment of the 72 Capri. Original paint under the hood. This is kind of interesting. Not the five quarts, but this, I assume, this must have been a factory thing. They didn't want the paint to fill in the number, so they must have taped it, painted the car, and then pulled the tape off. I'm not a Capri expert, but that seems to make sense to me. Here's the original <laughs> info plate, the Ford info plate right there. There we go. Did you get that? Let's see. Can I focus? There we go. Colors, trim, all of that stuff. I believe this was sapphire blue with a parchment interior. There's another build plate. And then just some the emissions for North America. I don't know if that was anywhere else. I did the valve covers and adjust the valves because this which I believe is number one <clears throat> the intake and exhaust uh, valve lash was very loose on number one so I tightened them up everything else was fine and now it's super quiet this is a cologne v6 2.6 liter The original owner was a aircraft mechanic. So I think some of the things that he did were like this. He's put a MSD ignition in it. And flushing system. It's all for preventive maintenance. Uh, 
then the K&N air filters in there. This is the original air cleaner assembly, shown to 2600. Two Venturi carburetor. And that concludes the engine.